It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It never is. Your boy brings it for you 30 minutes every day, Monday through Friday, to give you your football fill from a former player's perspective. Mike Lombardi was awesome yesterday on the front office and coaching stuff. Today, we've got the civilian goat. I love giving people nicknames. I feel like more people need to be calling Greg Cosell that. Hasn't really caught on like I was hoping it would, but that's okay. I'll just keep rolling with it because he is the greatest film watcher in the history of the sport of football that never played for or coached for a team. You know why? Because he's been team NFL films for almost 44 years. We'll get to Greg momentarily. It's Thursday, which means tomorrow already we'll have a spread the word winner via social media. I gave you the keys to the test there, the answers. Just follow at Ross Tucker Pod on Facebook. We have a new uh, Facebook uh, handle, Ross Tucker Pod, where we can post our clips. And then the sponsor confirmation email winner. I'm just going to give you the uh, the the answers to this test as well. Get the sign up for the free consult at westshore dot uh, slash ross. They finished the project Tuesday. It's incredible. I'll tell you guys about it later. At some point, I'll post before and after pictures. Incredible. Westshorehome dot com slash ross. In fact, the first person that schedules a free consultation and forwards the email to me, you'll be the winner. There you go. Boom. You're the winner. That easy. So it pays to listen to the show early and it pays to go to westshorehome.com slash Ross. You can get any press pass you want. Pick whatever one you want from this season that I still have. You got it. And then of course, still trying to grow that YouTube. It's going. Jack's done a great job with it. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. It helps when you got a great chance for me to do a video for you, your kids, your fantasy league, whatever. It's big show time. The Big Show. Greg, we got the playoffs. We got six games to break down. Super wild card weekend, Ross. Super wild card weekend. Super wild card weekend. You know what's weird, Greg? And I'm not trying to be mean to Seahawks and Dolphins fans, but it is kind of interesting that we've expanded the playoffs from six teams to seven teams. And I, I kind of was would have been more intrigued if either the Packers or the Lions made the playoffs in the NFC. And then in the AFC, I kind of probably would have been more intrigued if the Steelers made it. In other words, this is a year, Greg, where if they had eight in each conference, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have complained. Now it's not gonna be like that every year. But it would have been all teams with winning records, you know, on the wild card part of it. And interesting. We start, though, well, Greg's at Greg Cosell, by the way. But we start with Seattle at San Francisco. And just a wonderful season for the Seahawks. Nobody expected this from them or from Geno Smith. They're kind of playing a freight train, it feels like, Greg. What will you be looking at in this one? How does Seattle, you know, have a chance to stay in this one and maybe pull off the upset? You know, I think with these games, all of them, Ross, there's probably 10 things you could talk about, and we can't do that. So, well, I'll focus in on just one or two things for each game. And one of the things I'd be looking at at this game is Geno Smith, as good a year as he had, and this is not all his fault, by the way, but he's the most sacked quarterback in the NFL on third down. And Third down is where it's more difficult for offenses to really define reads and throws for quarterbacks. Third down, particularly third and longer yardage situations, is where the defense kind of has a tactical advantage or perhaps a personnel advantage, depending on the team. And in this case, I think the Niners have that advantage. So third down is what I'm really going to be looking at in this game uh, because the Niners' pass rush is obviously problematic. The O-line for the Seahawks has not played particularly well down the stretch. Uh, The rookie left tackle, Charles Cross, has actually, over the last six weeks or so, not played very well in pass protection. He has really struggled in one-on-one pass protection. So that's just one area to look at in this game. That's interesting. Um, Because usually, 
guys get better, young players get better over the course of the year. But um, I can tell you, Greg, I wasn't even playing. And I hit the crap out of the rookie wall. Right. It just was such a long year. And I was used to Ivy League 10 games. <laughs> 10 games. 10 games was week six. Yeah. Because of the four preseason games. You no, know? You're... And it and, and pro football is an all-day thing. It's your job. You know, college, you're used to getting up at 8.30 or whatever. Marty Schottenheimer had the rookies lift in Washington, Greg, at 6 a.m. So, like, my body clock was so off. I went from, I think, 316 or 308 to 288 by the end of the year. I just... You were a little worn out. That's huh? interesting about Charles Cross. Yeah, he's not uh, played particularly well, and it's been a little bit of a problem. And as I said, Smith is the most sacked quarterback on third down in the league this year. So, I'm not saying he's doing this, Greg. But... When I see that, I think he might have finished with over 70% completion percentage. When I see that, and then I hear your stat, there's a part of me that always wonders, is he not throwing the ball away for statistical purposes? And I'm not putting that on Gino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not asking you to say that, Greg. But there are some quarterbacks that have been known to do things for their stats and their passer rating. I don't think that's Geno, but he also shouldn't be taking that many sacks on third down. Yeah, I couldn't speak to that at all. Uh, all I can say is I think they've done a really good job with him this year with the use of play-action boot, with the use of pass game designs. Those you can do much better, obviously, Ross, in proactive situations, normal down and distance situations it's more difficult to do that on third and long. Now, he's made some phenomenal throws this year. The touchdown he threw to Lockett last week against the Rams was just about as big time a throw as you could make. So he's made big time throws. But third down is just one area I'll be looking at in this game. That was awesome. That throw to Lockett was awesome. And they needed it desperately. Oh, it was a great throw. All right. The Chargers are at the Jaguars. And I think the key I wanted to know from you, Greg, is this the best playoff hair matchup of quarterbacks that you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, Ross. Very good. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time yesterday actually looking at the Chargers offense and their passing game. And, it, you know, it's a really interesting passing game because you watch them and you see a lot of really good concepts in their passing game, uh, both versus man and zone. Now, this is an offense very much built on Herbert getting completions, which seems to be an overlooked thing in today's NFL. You know, getting completions is not a bad thing. Every pass can't be 30 yards down the field. Herbert, in, in a good way, can be mechanical and robotic, and he gets the ball out and he completes passes. And since they have a – let's put it this way. They don't have a big-time run game. They don't have a bad run game, but it's it's – I don't know what the numbers are. They're probably near the bottom of the league in terms of rushing. Uh, but so the run game is not truly a foundation of what they do. So they need completions. They need sustaining a sustaining element to their pass game. And that's what Herbert's really good at. But then, when, as I said, when I watched, you know, 100, 150 dropbacks in a row yesterday, which is tough for me to do during the regular season uh, for one team, you really see some nice concepts, the way they attack zones with, with route combinations. Um, they're good against man coverage. I think Mike Williams, who I know got hurt, but I think he's supposed to be okay. You know, he's a really important part of what they do because he's, he's their boundary X receiver and he can win one-on-one -on -one and he can make contested catches. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about the Chargers – Greg, is a lot of people complain that they don't throw it downfield enough because they have Herbert, and that's a big criticism you see online. I actually asked some people at the Chargers about that. They don't really have, like, a speed guy to take the top off the defense. I mean, you know, Mike Williams is great making contested catches, but he's not a burner. Keenan Allen's not a burner. They don't really have that, like, that guy that just blows you away deep, you know? Well, is that what they said? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 
the thing is, is they can go deep by design, but they don't have the one guy that you just line up, let's say, and say you run by people. That's what but, somebody with the Chargers told me when I asked him about yeah, it. Yeah, but, so. but all I know is in watching, you know, as I said it, yesterday, 150, 200 dropbacks from throughout the season in a row, you see some really nice concepts. Um, but I would just make the point that's often overlooked is there's nothing wrong with getting sustaining completions. That helps your offense as well. Right. Plus, they've had some O-line issues. They don't want to drop back and throw it deep. No. I think they want to get the ball out. And I don't know, Slater, he's in that window now, that open window. Uh, who knows whether he goes this week, but I guess it's possible. They say he's not going to play this week. Oh, they say he's not? Okay. Not going to play this week, but there's some hope maybe for next if they week. If were to or win, if he could whatever. go the next week. Yeah. But he's just happy to be out, you know, back out there practicing. Dolphins, Bills. Greg, um, I'll be doing that game Sunday at one. So uh, what is your analysis, whether it's whatever? I mean, I don't know. The 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 uh, the Bills defense wasn't that great against the Patriots last week. And I don't know, maybe you know something about Skylar Thompson because I don't know much. No, I don't know. You know, I did not watch him coming out of Kansas State, so I don't really know an awful lot about him. I don't have a large sample of his tape to really say that much about him at this point. You know, this is one of those games where we look at right now and we just assume, okay, it's it's Bills 30, Dolphins 10. But these are always the games that I think you have to be a little careful because if you're the Bills, and, and first of all, the Bills offense has done very well against the Dolphins defense over the last couple of years. I know the Dolphins defense is playing well. They've got some good players. Um, they'll play both man and zone. Um, they like to play man. That's probably more of their MO than zone. Uh they played week 15. They used a spy on Josh Allen at times. Um, there were times Allen beat the spy. Um, so you look at this and you think that they can't win this game if the Bills put up a lot of points. That's the way you think just generally. So to me, and these are not profound thoughts, but for the Bills, it comes down to not making the kinds of mistakes that give the Dolphins an opportunity, whether it's a drop punt, whether it's penalties. You know, if the Bills just play and and they don't and, and and I think this is a game where Josh Allen um just has to play and not worry about being special. I think his special plays just come as he plays through a game, but there's nothing wrong on third and ten if they give you a blitz and it beats your offense and you know what you throw it away or you run for four yards and you punt. That's okay. Um now we know Allen can be – the throw he made to Stephon Diggs last week for the touchdown, I'm sure you saw that, Ross. Not many yes. people are making, Not many people are making that throw. I mean, that's – he threw that from the opposite hash. That ball probably traveled more than 70 yards in the air, and he had to throw it flat-footed. He couldn't really step into it. Yeah, it's unbelievable some of the throws that he makes at times. Although, Greg, he's had a lot of – Silly turnovers this year, too. He leads the NFL in interceptions in the red zone. That, that'll that get you beat against the Bengals or the Chiefs. Yeah, he had one more red zone interception, by the way, than Patrick Mahomes. Isn't that interesting that those guys that he has five and Mahomes has four? Yeah. That seems like a lot for those guys. But I, I, I'm assuming your argument would be, listen, if you're going to be making that many – I mean, they're, they're one and two in touchdown passes. If you're going to throw that many touchdown passes – you're probably going to have to throw some picks down there too, trying to fit the ball. Yeah, in. I'm not defending Josh Allen throwing bad picks in the red zone. By the way, he he had some really really bad ones where only he could tell you what he saw. I couldn't. Um, so uh, there's no question. See, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. That can't happen in this game. You know, that's the kind of situation, Ross, where if you're down in the red zone and it's third down and you just don't see it, you know, you that's where he has to either just run or get a few yards potentially take a sack, throw it away, just get the points. Just keep the game playing. Don't give the Dolphins an opportunity. I mean, but yeah, you can't defend red zone interceptions, although you have to look at each one individually because some are not on the quarterback. Um, but, you know, obviously he also makes special plays. Josh Allen to me is not, he can be, but I, I don't think he's a precision quarterback in the same way, let's say, that Joe Burrow is, but then Allen can make plays and throws that other guys can't. Giants, Vikings. It's interesting. It's one, I think it's one of the more interesting games this weekend because they just played a few weeks ago and it was an awesome football game. 
What's kind of the matchup you're looking at or breaking down yeah. in Giants Vikings? Was Sunday the only game this year, Ross, in which uh, Brian Dable let Daniel Jones drop back and throw. Um, it, some may remember the Giants lost to the Lions big earlier in the season, and in that game, Jones had to throw because they were down big. Um, but that was the only game that was a close game all the way in which Brian Dable let Daniel Jones drop back. I think he had 45 or 46 dropbacks in that game, and he was really, really good in that game. So I'm very curious to see, because we know that the Vikings have struggled to defend the pass this year, um, if they take that approach. The game will be indoors, weather won't be an issue, it'll be a fast track. Um, I think I think it's evident watching the tape that Jones has gotten more comfortable with Isaiah Hodgins, with Richie James. Uh, Slayton had been there, so he, he, you know, he's been around. Hodgins has developed into kind of a nice receiver for them. You know, it, in a league where when you throw it a lot, if the Giants choose to, receivers get targets. So receivers, therefore, get get receptions. And Hodgins has kind of developed into their guy and I'm curious to see how this plays out. I'm curious to see if Dable takes that same approach and throws the ball a lot against uh, this Vikings defense. I never even heard of Hodgins before this year. Never yeah, I, I did him coming out of Oregon State. Ago. I did him coming out of Oregon State. He was a a uh, put up big numbers in college. Um, he's not fast, which is why he was a late round pick by the Bills. You know, he's six four, two fifteen. He's not going to run by anybody, but has really good hands as a feel for route running, you know, those kinds of players do play in the NFL. They're not number ones, but you know what? For the Giants, he's probably their number one, and that's really all that matters to them. Sunday night, I was really excited about ravens Bengals. It doesn't sound like Lamar Jackson is going to play, no. Greg, which is a major bummer. I, I don't even know what you got on this game with that. Well, I think case. on this game, you have to look at the other side of the ball. In recent weeks, the Ravens have essentially played big nickel as their defense. Now, that could change because I believe Marcus Peters will be back this week. But in the last number of weeks, without Marcus Peters, they've essentially played Kyle Hamilton, the rookie safety from Notre Dame, as their slot corner. He plays almost every snap. Um, they don't play a lot of man coverage. They're a high, high percentage zone team. Um, and they, they haven't blitzed very much. They've been very selective with their pressure. So, you know, we're, we're used to thinking of the Ravens when Wink Martindale was there as high percentage man, high percentage blitz. That's not the way they played this year under Mike McDonald. You know, I just finished watching the tape from the game this past week because these teams are having a rematch this week, obviously. And not much blitz, a lot of zone coverage. You know, Hamilton was playing in the slot, so he was lining up over Boyd, but not necessarily matching him man to man. And what they did is Humphrey played boundary corner, which gets him against Chase a good amount because Chase is predominantly their boundary X. But he played boundary corner. And last week, Worley was the field corner. Now, again, much of this is dependent on Marcus Peters. If he plays, we could see some meaningful changes in how the Ravens go about playing defense. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I want to spend the most time, I think, on Cowboys Bucks. I'm very interested in it. Man, you know, Greg, I, I kind of thought Dak had done a lot of good things this year, and everybody this week is just killing Dak. Just telling yeah. saying it's the worst season he's had. He's playing terrible. Weren't they like every when he came back from injury, weren't they number one in scoring? Yeah, he did not play him. well last week. I think last week, you know, when it's the last game of his season, people remember that. Obviously, they're moving on to the playoffs. But last week, he did not see things at all. His his vision was very limited and condensed. And when you're not seeing things, you tend to move and play fast. Um, he didn't really play with any good sense of timing or anticipation last week. He had a bad game. Um, I think what we both know about Dak, uh, Ross, is that he's – is he's not the kind of guy that's necessarily going to come out and have a really bad game two weeks in a row. Uh, so we'll see there. But on the other side, you know, I spent a lot of time looking at the Bucks passing game this week. It's really interesting. I don't look at their pass game and come away and say, wow, they have great concepts. I almost feel like it's Brady throwing to some really good receivers um, and they expect their receivers to win and Brady's going to throw them the football. And, 
I would say two weeks ago when they played Carolina, because this past week, obviously, Brady didn't play many snaps and they just kind of wanted to get through the game. Um, I would say that that was the best the O-line played. And Carolina does not have a bad defense, by the way. So Brady was comfortable in the pocket. He had more time. They were able to push the ball down the field. That has to happen. This team has not been able to run the ball at all this year with any kind of consistency. So it really has to be the passing game. They're a pass-driven offense. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how the Carolina Panthers allowed Mike Evans to beat him over the top three times. I, I don't yeah. know how that happens in that game. I know J.C. Horn was hurt. I don't care. D don't let the guy run past you. Like yeah. that. That is unbelievable to me. Yeah, Greg, you're times. unbelievable every week. Huge fan. You know it. At Greg Cosell on social. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ross. And thank you so much to West Shore Home. Oh, my gosh. First of all, they delivered on exactly what they said they would, okay? The employees that came, and they're all full-time employees. These aren't like contractors. They all came. They're all dressed in West Shore Home gear, very professional. And they got not one, but two bathrooms done in one day. That's wild. I kept checking on them throughout the day. I stink at stuff like that. I have no idea how they're able to tear the old fiberglass tub out and put in these beautiful new showers. If you haven't been following me on social, I've been posting it on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram stories, Twitter tweets, at Ross Tucker NFL on both. And we've retweeted it, at Ross Tucker Pod. The girls are so excited. We are incredibly impressed. It's like we've totally, it feels like we've totally modernized our upstairs just by doing two bathrooms. Can't highly recommend them enough. And I was already pretty bullish on them just from the, the process ahead of time. But now that I see the final product, it's incredible. It really is. And I mentioned this earlier in the show. I am guaranteeing you are the sponsor confirmation email winner. If you go to westshorehome.com slash Ross and schedule a free consultation, free, free consultation. Why not get a quote and see what it would be to modernize one or more of your bathrooms? Awesome. And you can win something for me just by scheduling the free consultation, westshorehome.com slash Ross. Make sure you're following me on Twitter or Instagram because I'm going to post some before and after pics probably, uh, probably early next week at this point. westshorehome.com slash Ross. Tux Takes. All right, Ross, we'll start with Tua being ruled out and the Dolphins are preparing to start Skylar Thompson, the quarterback. So I'm not surprised by this. At all. I think most people probably did not expect Tua to play. I guess what I remain confused about is there's supposed to be a concussion protocol and a process. So I guess I don't understand like how on a Wednesday he's ruled out. Is he not taking those steps within the process? And how do you know he wouldn't be cleared by Sunday? That's what... And maybe it's just a different situation because we all believe it's his third concussion, even though they have confirmed two. And maybe he's just met with some doctors that said, look, it's just not a good idea to try to play again this year. And that's fine. Um, but I, I just, I, I always, I'm a process oriented guy. So I find that part of it interesting. As for Skylar Thompson, I, I personally kind of hope Bridgewater can play. He had that dislocated pinky against the Patriots two weeks ago. Man, I kind of would think that that is at the point where he can throw with it and play with it, but I guess we'll see. Tux takes. Reports indicate it is not looking good for quarterback Lamar Jackson to start on Sunday night for the Baltimore Ravens against the Bengals. Saw that report from Ian Rappaport yesterday, and I actually tweeted about this. You know, uh, uh, most doctors that you read and talked to thought he would be back by now, right? It seems pretty clear the Ravens thought he would be back by now. So I do think it's fair now to wonder where the contract comes into play. No one is disputing he has the injury. 
No one is disputing that it bothers him. The question is, do you go out there at less than 100% or not? I will say a lot of his teammates are going out there at less than 100%. I think Lamar Jackson himself has played a lot of games in his career at less than 100%. But his contract's expiring. And his knee doesn't feel great. And I'm okay with him saying, you know what? This is not the right thing for me to try to push this given my personal situation. Remember, he is an independent contractor currently playing for the Baltimore Ravens. If he's saying, I'm not going out there less than 100% without the security of a long-term deal, I- I'm actually okay with that. I just think it's, it's time now for us to at least have that conversation and discuss the elephant in the room. Tux takes. The Jets part ways with their offense coordinator, Michael Fleur. Not overly surprised. Um, you know, it's tough when you're playing three quarterbacks like he did this year. That's not ideal. But again, probably not overly surprised that the Jets are parting ways. They're going to bring somebody in that they think is going to be able to get the job done with Zach Wilson or whatever veteran quarterback they bring in. The bottom line is they just didn't score enough points. I guess the problem with that is, in my mind, they did move it pretty well when they had Mike White playing well. So it's not like LaFleur has no idea what he's doing. When Mike White was making the easy look easy, they were moving the ball and scoring points. Tux takes. Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin, has been discharged from the hospital. So amazing. So awesome. You know, the thought has crossed my mind, Jack, since I'm going to be there. And by the way, Steven Soroka, check your DMs, bro. That's my. That's one of my boys up in Buffalo, Jan Lehman. I haven't heard from Jan in a while. Jan, I hope everything's going okay. I haven't heard from you in a while on an email or on the Slack channel. Hope everything's going great with you, Jan, and your family. But Soroka, check your DMs, bro. Anyway, um, is there a chance he's at this game, Jack? That's my question. I, I mean, I, the, the thought has crossed my mind about DeMar Hamlin being at this game. We'll see. I don't know. You know, there's still a few days. I don't know. If they want to get his excitement up that high. You know, I don't know if, if they want his heart to, 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 to be in that situation. But that, that would be an amazing story if he was able to be there. You know, um, speaking of amazing, big Peloton guy. You know why? Primarily because my wife loves it. My brother-in-law loves it. My sister-in-law loves it. Honestly, I need to get into it more. I've always had kind of my own routine. I have a exercise room right next to my uh, office over here in the detached garage. But I need to start taking some of these classes like yoga, interval training. It's amazing. I just know for people, especially that are just starting out, it's amazing because you can do like a 10 minute power walk or a 30 minute endurance ride. Love the instructors. The music is the key. If you've ever tried to do a workout program, but you haven't really been able to motivate yourself, you will not have that issue with these classes, instructors, and music. Try Peloton risk-free with a 30 day home trial. This is for new members only. It's not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Tux takes. Giants sign wire here, James Washington to their practice squad. That makes sense, right? I mean, you know, it might only be for one week, but they get a look at him, decide whether or not they want to try to sign him again this offseason. See what he can do for him. Maybe they win the game against the Vikings, but somebody gets hurt and he can actually play next week. That makes perfect sense to me that the Giants did that and signed James Washington. I like teams that are, he's been productive player at times for the Steelers. Why not bring him into the fold? And why not take advantage of any of our amazing, I think we're done here, members of patreon.com slash RT Media. Pizza Boy Brewing. Sportaculture, humanheadnyc.com, 
Vision Comics with an X, BackOfficeScheduler.com, Evergreen Economics, Go-Bangles.com, good week for them, SteakhouseSports.com, and of course, a little over a month from Valentine's Day, MyFrontPageStory.com. I would not steer you guys wrong with the best Valentine's Day gift you could ever give your significant other. Picks Friday tomorrow. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.